welcome students to the another session of life processes today we will be learning human digestive system the human digestive system is a unique design that uses mechanical and chemical processes that turn the food a person eats into energy and nutrients that the body can use for energy growth and cell repair the process of digestion has many stages in which several organs tissues and body systems work together in breaking down large complex molecules into smaller for distribution and use the, throughout the body digestive system organs fall into two main groups the alimentary canal and the accessory organs the alimentary canal is 30 feet in length in the average adult the alimentary canal is a series of hollow organs joined in a long twisting tube that runs uninterrupted from the mouth to the anus the accessory organs include the liver pancreas the gallbladder they are the solid organs and act as accessories to the alimentary canal by adding secretions that aid digestion the organs in the alimentary tract are the mouth pharynx esophagus stomach small intestine large intestine rectum and the anal canal The accessory organs include the teeth, tongue, salivary glands, pancreas, liver, gallbladder. This is a label diagram that will help you to understand the various parts of the human digestive system. The following organs helps in digestion process as we take in food in our mouth. Mouth has teeth, salivary glands, tongue. chewing and grinding of food is mainly done by the teeth the salivary gland releases saliva saliva has mucus and enzyme amylase mucus helps to lubricate the food amylase helps to break down the carbohydrates amylase catalyzes the first step in digestion of starch which is a complex carbohydrate to sugar that is a simple carbohydrate meaning that our digestion starts right in the mouth and carbohydrate is digested tongue mixing of food and swallowing of the food is done by the muscular tongue to be sent to the next part of the digestive tract the food that is sent down is now called as bolus which is the next part of the digestive tract it is pharynx teeth these are the salivary glands this is a tongue the food is ingested inside digestion of food takes place over here the food carbohydrate is digested here along with the process of chewing and after the swallowing the food enters into the pharynx the alimentary canal has different parts and the food from the mouth is swallowed into the pharynx pharynx is a common organ for both air and food food then enters esophagus here food is pushed down by peristalsis the alimentary canal has muscles that contract rhythmically to push the food forward and this movement of food is called as peristaltic movement which occurs all along the gut the food is taken to the stomach through the food pipe or esophagus from the mouth here the muscles contract and the food is pushed down here you can see the muscles contract and the food enters into the stomach stomach the one way movement of the food mass now called a bolus is controlled by wave like involuntary muscle contractions this movement is known as peristalsis the food is taken to the stomach through the food pipe or the esophagus from the mouth the muscular wall of the stomach mixes the food with more digestive juices secreted by the gastric glands present in the walls of the stomach these gastric juices include hydrochloric acid enzyme pepsin and mucus hydrochloric acid provides acidic medium so that the enzyme pepsin can act on the food it also kills microbes in the stomach which enters with the food pepsin helps in breaking down the protein into smaller molecules mucus protects the inner lining of the stomach otherwise a strong acid 
ten hard minutes. Food remains in the stomach for nearly three to six hours and then empties into the small intestine. So, from stomach, the acidic food enters small intestine. That is the longest part of the alimentary canal, and this is regulated by the sphincter muscle. Food from the esophagus from here enters into the stomach. Stomach is a J-shaped organ. The digested food from the stomach enters into the small intestine. This is the longest organ, the small intestine. Here you can see. And it is nearly 6 to 7 meters long. At the juncture of the esophagus and the stomach, and between the stomach and the small intestine, there are sphincter muscles that act as walls. Once the food enters into the stomach, it prevents the backflow of the food into the esophagus. And once the food is digesting in the stomach, the sphincter muscles at the stomach and small intestine juncture will also contract and will not allow the food to go out into the small intestine. The process of digestion in the stomach is nearly three to six hours. Churning takes place in the stomach aided by peristaltic movement. The digested food then enters the small intestine. The small intestine is divided into three parts. The first part is a very small part and it is nearly 20 to 25 centimeter in length. It is a C-shaped part and it is called as duodenum. If I come over here, this is the whole small intestine. This is a duodenum that is the first part of the small intestine. We should know that in this whole of small intestine, two processes are taking place. One is a digestion in the duodenum and in the jejunum and the ileum part, the absorption of food takes place. Digestion occurs mainly in the C-shaped duodenum. Your accessory organs like the liver and the pancreas helps in digestion. Liver secretes bile. Bile is stored in the gallbladder. Pancreas secretes pancreatic juice. Both this bile and pancreatic juice enters the duodenum part of the small intestine by a duct. They are the accessory organs because they are not in the part of this duct. They aid in digestion. Bile secreted by the liver makes the acidic food alkaline and acts on large globules of fat into smaller globules so that the enzymes can act on easily. The process of breakdown of large fat globules into small globules which increases the efficiency of the pancreatic enzymes is called as emulsification. So larger fat globules and this bile. So here bile act on the larger fat globules and they have become smaller. They even become more smaller. And as they become smaller and smaller, you can see the surface area increases. You can note down the surface area of these large flat globules and note down the surface area of all these small globules here. The surface area is definitely going to be much more. Pancreas secrete pancreatic juice, which contains enzymes, trypsin, lipase, amylase. Trypsin helps to break down proteins, lipase, the fats, amylase, the carbohydrates. The walls of the small intestine also contains glands that secretes intestinal juice, which converts finally the complex carbohydrates into glucose, proteins, glucose, proteins to amino acids, and fats into fatty acids and glycerol. So in small intestine, how many types of juices are there? There's a bile juice that helps in process of emulsification. There's pancreatic juice that contains Different enzymes like trypsin, lipase, amylase that aid in digestion of the food. And that is an intestinal juice which also has different enzymes and that helps in finally breaking down the particles into many small molecules. The process of taking fluids and nutrients into the bloodstream is known as absorption. 
This section of elementary canal is largely responsible for absorption of water and soluble substances such as simple sugar, salts, and alcohol. This section is the jejunum and the ileum part where mainly absorption is taking place. The lining of small intestine has a thin epithelium that allows for easy diffusion of nutrients and the sheer size of the small intestine provides a significant surface area on which an absorption can take place. The human small intestine measures 6 meters or 20 feet and its absorptive area measures 250 square meters or nearly 2700 feet which is about the size of tennis court. The mucosal fold of the inner surface creates even more surface area for absorption. These minute folds are called as villi. Each villus has a network of capillaries and fine lymphatic vessels known as lactyls close to its surface. Amino acids and carbohydrates move into capillaries while lipids move into lactyls. You should be noting here, again I'll specify, lipids move into lactyls and amino acids and carbohydrates move into the blood capillaries. We like our hair-like structures that are found in the small intestine and they help in absorption of fatty acids, glycerols. Herbivorous intestinal tracts are much longer than our carnivorous of comparable size. They have got a larger intestinal tract because they eat food that is rich in cellulose and it takes longer time for digestion. Humans and herbivores both lack enzymes that digest cellulose. In herbivores, the bacteria that live in the gut produces enzymes to digest cellulose. Longer intestine means food will stay for a longer duration. This is an anatomy of a uh, intestine. The intestine is one inch in diameter. You can see inside the intestine, the area has got many hair-like structures, the finger-like projections we can say. And this increases the surface area. Each of this finger -like, these finger-like structures are called as villi. This is a villus. This is a lactyl which absorbs the fatty acids. And this is a blood capillaries that absorbs the digested carbohydrates and proteins. The unabsorbed food is sent to the large intestine where more will I absorb water from this undigested material and the rest of the material is removed from the body by NS. The removal of waste materials by the NS is regulated by the NL sphincters. So this is a large intestine. This place is called a cecum. It is the place which uh, is joined with the small intestine. The waste enters into the large intestine and it, it, the, this waste is in the liquid form. It travels to the, the whole colon area. The role of the colon area is to reabsorb nutrients and water. And by the time the waste reaches to the rectum part, the waste becomes semi-solid in nature. And this is called as stool. This stool is stored in the rectum. And the waste is thrown out of the body through the opening that is called as anus. Anus is the last part of the digestive tract. It is a two inch long canal consisting of the pelvic floor muscles and two anal sphincters. One is an internal and one is an external. The lining of the upper anus is able to detect rectal contents. It lets you know whether the contents are liquid, gas, or solid. The anus is surrounded by sphincter muscles that are important in allowing control of stool. The pelvic floor muscle creates an angle between the rectum and the anus that stops the stool from coming out when it is not supposed to. The internal sphincter is always tight. They help in preventing the fooing of the stool involuntarily. Assimilation is the uptake of nutrients into the body cells and tissues 
and the reassembly of absorbed nutrients into the complex substances. The small intestine absorbs most digested food molecules as well as, as, well as water and minerals during assimilation. Those molecules are passed onto the other part of the body for storage or further chemical change. Simple sugars, glycerol, amino acids, and some vitamins and salts move through the bloodstream to the liver. The lymphatic system absorbs fatty acids and vitamins. For your extra knowledge, today I'll tell you about our body cavity. The body cavity is divided into two types. They are the dorsal body cavity and the ventral body cavity. The dorsal body cavity is on the back side of your body and the ventral body cavity is on the front side of your body. The dorsal body cavity includes the cranial cavity which has brain inside it and the vertebral cavity has got a spinal cord. The ventral body cavity has thoracic and abdominal pelvic cavity. The thoracic and the abdominal pelvic cavity are separated by diaphragm. The Above the diaphragm is the thoracic cavity and below the diaphragm is the abdominal pelvic cavity. The abdominal pelvic cavity has abdominal cavity and the pelvic cavity. Till now we have understood the parts of digestive system as well as the process of digestion. This video will help you to understand these things in a better way. The primary functions of the digestive system are the breakdown of food called digestion and absorption of nutrients. Digestion begins in the mouth where the teeth break food into smaller particles during mastication. Salivary glands located near the oral cavity secrete saliva, which begins chemical digestion and keeps the food moist. As food is swallowed, the soft palate blocks the upper pharynx to prevent food from entering the nasal cavity, and multiple voluntary muscles in the face, neck, and tongue contract, pushing food particles through the pharynx. The food passes over the epiglottis, which prevents food entry into the respiratory system, and then into the esophagus, which connects the pharynx to the stomach. The one-way movement of the food mass, now called a bolus, is controlled by wave-like involuntary muscle contractions. This movement is known as peristalsis. The bolus now enters the stomach. Folds in the stomach wall, called rugae, allow for expansion as the stomach fills. Stomach cells secrete hydrochloric acid, pepsinogen, and various regulatory hormones that chemically digest the bolus. Muscular contractions in the stomach churn its contents to further break down the bolus and mix it with stomach secretions to form a thick liquid called chyme. Chyme exits the stomach through the pyloric sphincter and enters the small intestine, the major site of nutrient absorption. The small intestine consists of three parts, the duodenum, jejunum, and ileum. Bile from the liver and digestive enzymes from the pancreas empty into the duodenum to aid in digestion. Absorbed nutrients pass from the lumen of the small intestine into blood and lymph. Chyme not absorbed in the small intestine enters the large intestine. As it passes through the cecum and ascending, transverse, descending, and sigmoid colon, water and salts are absorbed and chyme is converted into feces. The rectum stores feces until nervous stimulation initiates the defecation reflex, resulting in elimination through the anal canal. Thank you and see you in the next session.